so good morning and uh, welcome to this class i think this is a uh, lecture number 9 and in the previous lectures we have already dealt with uh, expansion and we had done some really good problems on expansion which i think has covered the entire spectrum of the questions that uh, we can expect in the exams as promised and as i told you before that uh, in today's class we will be doing moving ahead with something that we call calorimetry i hope you have heard this term calorimetry metry means measurement calorie is the unit for heat so calorimetry literally means measurement of heat so in this uh, <clears throat> particular topic we will be dealing with measurement of heat and uh, what happens when heat flows from one um, one body to the other body or one body to the system or from system to the surroundings remember here we are not concerned with the process by which heat is flowing that will be dealt in heat transfer so that will be a different topic right now we are only concerned with how much amount of heat since we know that uh, heat is an energy that flows because of uh, difference in temperature here we will see how much heat flows because of difference in temperature now before going on to this i hope you know the heat i always denoted by the letter delta q delta standing for change why do i use the word change because i want to insist at all times that uh, heat is only transferred or heat is only heat when it is getting transferred heat now we know that this uh, si unit of heat is uh, joules but we also use calorie as one of the units we have already dealt with calorie and we also know the relation between joules and calories through that mechanical equivalent of heat wala thing one joule is how much in calories or one calorie is how much in joules i hope you must be knowing it calorie <clears throat> we have also seen uh, the definition of calorie we define it in terms of uh, heat given to raise the temperature of water by 1 degree celsius again that 1 degree celsius ka rise should be from 14.5 to 15.5 uh, degree celsius i hope uh, we all are aware of these terms so let us not waste any time in dealing with those terms and let us move ahead and see what we can do with those terms calorie and uh, joules are already known to us the next heading for this uh, would be something known as gram specific heat do you have you heard this term gram specific heat anyone gram specific heat are you aware of this term no you have not heard this term have you heard the term specific heat specific heat you have heard okay but gram specific heat you have not heard this is just a way to differentiate this uh, there are two types of specific heat that we going to deal with and then not much difference between those two heat but just to differentiate them uh, we have added this term gram specific heat now what is this gram specific heat well this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram if you talk in cgs unit or 1 kg of a substance by 1 degree celsius that is known as your gram specific heat 1 gram or 1 kg by 1 degree celsius that is known as your gram specific heat do you remember this now right now what i am going to do is we are going to define or write this term as small c small c stands for gram specific heat 
amount of heat required to raise the temperature by of 1 kg or 1 gram by 1 degree celsius and hence the si unit for this c becomes what will be the si unit for c the si unit for c will be kg uh, joule per kg per kelvin that becomes the si unit for uh, the c if i talk in terms of the cds unit it becomes calorie per gram per degree celsius or degree centigrade we don't call it centigrade anymore so that will be the gram specific heat for any body for example you must be knowing that gram specific heat of water or specific heat of water we hardly we may not use the term gram specific heat whenever we refer to this gram specific heat we just simply call it as specific heat so you might not call it by the full name you may just call it by specific heat actually the full name is gram specific heat gram specific heat or specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram per degree celsius now in a question that we solve this value may not be given you are supposed to know this but if this question comes in an examination hall probably they will give you this value or you they will give it in terms of uh, joules 4.2 kilo joule per kg per whatever for ice if i talk this value becomes 0 0.5 and we must be aware of uh, these two values because these are the two very important terms that uh, would come to us. This is gram specific heat. Now, if I already told you that there are two types of specific heat, they are not two types. Basically, we define them. Uh, one is defined in terms of per kg. You can measure a body, or its mass or its weight, how much the weight or mass of the body is. Similarly, we can measure it in a different way. How we can measure it? Not by this mass, not by how much is the mass of this body, but by what? For example, if I have, if I tell you I have one kg of silver block with me, that's one way of telling you how much silver I have. The other way of telling it is what? It comes from chemistry. The other way of telling it is how many moles of silver I have. So the other type of specific heat, it's not other type, it's just the way uh, it is defined is known as molar specific heat. Have you heard this term molar specific heat? Molar specific heat, that is the next term. Now, since this, the previous gentleman was denoted by small c, the other gentleman will be defined by capital C. So that is how we'll use it, capital C. Uh, books might call it s as standing for specific heat not a problem you can also use that but uh, i would prefer that uh, we use the same terminology everywhere so that things don't get confusing so that is how we define this molar specific heat now gram specific heat was heat energy required to raise one gram of substance or one kg of substance by one degree celsius what will molar specific heat mean then? What will this molar specific heat? Since we have used already used the term molar, so it will mean that we are standing for the amount of heat which we require to raise the temperature of one mole of the substance by one degree Celsius or by one uh, degree Kelvin. Do we understand this? So. It, this will be amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of the substance. So the SI unit becomes, oops, wrong color. Okay, let me use it. Uh, mole, it's not changing. Mole, oh, why I'm using mole first? Joule per mole per Kelvin or the CGS unit becomes calorie per mole per degree Celsius. Hardly makes a difference. Um, in this particular topic, we might not be using this C. 
because we would be dealing with uh, gram specific heats. So we might be using this one. Hardly I have found a question where they have given molar specific heat because uh, here basically uh, in this question, uh, in this topic, the amount, the heat that is going to get transferred is going to get transferred from one solid body to the other solid body. So that is we, for solid bodies, we hardly use moles. Uh, it would be very difficult to make you understand that this pen has flana flana number of molecules or number of atoms might sound very ridiculous. So instead of telling you the number of moles, I would prefer to call it by the mass of this body. So here, basically, we are going to deal with uh, heat transfer or, uh, or calorimetry from this one body or liquids. Even for liquids, if I talk in terms of moles, it would be ridiculous. So we hardly use molar specific in, in this one, but we'll be using this molar specific in a coming chapter. What is that chapter? Where we use molar specific heat and we hardly use gram specific heat. Uh, are, have you heard about molar specific heat? Where have you heard about molar specific heat? Have you heard about uh, molar specific heat? Where have you heard? You must have heard this CP and CV, right? So when we use this CP and CV, this is molar specific heat of a gas at constant volume at constant pressure. So there we use this C capital C molar because when you talk in terms of gas, to tell you that I have one kg of helium may not be appropriate. It's good, but we'll talk when you talk in terms of gases. We talk in terms of number of moles of the gas that I have. So there we'll be using uh, this term. So these are the two terms that we must understand. Now. The question that comes to you, instead of giving you the gram specific heat and the molar specific heat, the question could have come in a different way. Now, I mean, uh, so we can also define two more terms from here. What are the two more terms that we can define from here? The first term that we can define from here is this thermal capacity do you see this thermal capacity of a body now what do i mean by thermal capacity of a body anyone any idea about this thermal capacity now this thermal capacity now instead of telling you how much heat per gram of this body requires for a rise in temperature instead of telling you this i can tell you this in a very in a more simpler way instead of getting you into per gram or per mole of this substance i will just simply tell you how much heat this substance whatever the mass of this substance is or whatever the number of moles of this substance is i can simply tell you how much heat i require to raise the temperature of this body this complete body it might be a pen it might be a cylinder it might be a bucket it might be a vessel that would be more simpler for me to tell you instead of telling you the mass of this bucket is uh, 10 kgs and the specific heat of this bucket is uh, 5 calorie per degree celsius per per gram you just have to multiply both the quantities to find out the how much heat is required to raise the temperature of this body so this thermal capacity becomes a more easier term to make you understand how much heat is required to change the temperature of a complete body, not per gram of the body or not per mole of the body. I just tell you, okay, this is a mouse. How much heat is required to raise the temperature of this mouse by one degree Celsius? That is more simpler. That is more easier to talk and then more easier to understand. That is known as a thermal capacity of the body. How do I define it? Is it defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a whole body, complete body? by one degree celsius or one degree cal or one kelvin now this thermal capacity we'll refer to as s small s or capital s i leave it to you the, the relation between these three definitions that we have seen s if i call s as thermal capacity s will be equal to m into c what does m stand for M stands for the mass of the body and C stands for 
is gram specific heat. I can also write it like this. This will be equal to N multiplied by capital C. What does N stand for here? What does N stand for here? N stands here for the number of moles of the body. So this is another way of telling you how much it is required to raise the temperature of a body by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin or whatever it is. This is what we call as thermal capacity. I hope you understand this. Can I have the raise hand? Okay. Now, everything in heat or in fact, uh, everything in, his, uh, in our lives are based on one basic quantity that everyone needs to survive and that is water. And most of the things that you see in this chapter, thermodynamics in this particular chapter, in this particular topic, calorimetry, one calorie is also defined on water. That uh, lower point and upper point of a thermometer is also defined on water, melting point of water, freezing point of water, or boiling point of water. In fact, your entire Kelvin scale that we use is also defined on water. Triple point of water, you've already seen that. So water holds a very special place here in our lives. And that is why we have this term known as water equivalent. Now, you might get confused with this definition of water equivalent. Now, we must know that, uh, and we have already seen that the specific heat of water is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius, whatever. So if I have 10 grams of water, the amount of heat required to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius will be 10 multiplied by one, 10. 10 calories will be required to raise the temperature of 10 grams of water. If I have 50 grams of water, I will need 50 calories per degree Celsius rise. One kg of water, I will need 1000 calories to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. Now, again, a different way of telling you the same thing. One way of telling you this, how much it is required is I tell you how much it is required to raise per gram. The second way is I tell you how much it is required to raise it by one mole per mole. The third way is I tell you how much heat is required to raise the temperature of the entire body. Now, the other way of saying the same thing is what this body is equal to in terms of water. I can't equate this body in terms of water. This is a solid body and water is liquid. Two totally different things. But here I'm not concerned with the type of the body, I'm only concerned with how much heat is required to raise the temperature of this body in terms of water. If this body was water, how much water it is equal to? That much water is known as the water equivalent. So instead of telling you, for example, if I have a body, if this is a body and the thermal capacity of this body is, let us say is 50 calories. Thermal capacity of this body is 50 calories per degree Celsius. That means I will need 50 calories to raise the temperature of this body by one degree Celsius. Now I can say the same thing in terms of water equivalent. Water equivalent. So I write it in terms of MW. M standing for mass, W standing for water. Now, instead of telling you that this uh, specific heat or thermal capacity of this body is 50 calories per gram, I just tell you that the water equivalent of this body is 50 gram. Do we understand the way that I have told you this? That means what I'm going to tell you, or what I'm trying to make you understand is, whatever heat is required to raise the temperature of this body by one degree Celsius, that heat is same as whatever heat I require to change the temperature of 50 grams of water by one degree Celsius. Are you getting my point, everyone? So basically, this water equivalent, if I look at this water equivalent and if I look at this thermal capacity, they have different units. They have different units. One is grams, other one is per calorie per degree Celsius, but they are trying to tell you the same thing. So numerically, both these quantities are equal. Numerically, water equivalent, the numerical value is 50, 
and the numerical value of this thermal capacity is also 50. So numerically, both these things are equivalent. Do we understand this? So that is what I mean by thermal capacity and water equivalent of a body. Are we clear with this, everyone? So this is one thing that will come to us in this particular chapter which is known as the specific heat of a body. But we have seen certain processes where when you give heat to a body, the temperature of the body does not change. We have discussed those, uh, we have discussed those uh, cases as well. When, do, when does that happen that you give heat to a body and the temperature of the body does not change. We have seen a process known as isothermal process to give heat to a body, but the temperature of the body does not change. Similarly, when the body is at its boiling or melting or freezing point, the temperature of the body does not change. In fact, uh, whatever heat we give to the body, it is utilized to change the temperature, uh, to change the state of the body. That heat is known as what? That it is known as latent heat. The word latent literally means hidden. Uh, why we call it hidden? Because uh, it's normal for us to understand that uh, when you give heat to a body, the temperature changes. But it becomes difficult for us to understand at times that when you give heat to a body, it may also result in changing the state of the body. When you give heat to ice at its uh, freezing, uh, at its melting point, the temperature of the ice does not change at zero degrees Celsius. It will slowly, 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 slowly melt and get converted into water. Similarly, when you are having water at 100 degrees Celsius and you give it more heat, the temperature of the water does not change, but water starts to get converted into vapor. That heat that you are giving it is utilized to change the state of the body. And that heat is known as latent heat. So we'll have two types of latent heat. What will be the two types of latent heat? One will be latent heat of melting or freezing. Now melting is same as freezing. When you, when you give heat to a solid body at its melting point, you convert solid into liquid. If you extract heat from the body, liquid body at its freezing point, call it the freezing point then, then the body gets converted from liquid to solid. So latent heat of melting or latent heat of freezing are the same thing. I hope you all understand this, yes or no? Yes, similarly we have latent heat of boiling or latent heat of condensation. Latent heat of boiling or latent heat of condensation. Again, boiling refers to the process where liquid is getting converted into gas. Condensation is the process. We use it for water, basically, when water vapor gets converted into water back. Now, this latent heat, we simply define it, or we simply denote it by the letter capital L. So, capital L stands for latent heat. So delta Q, the latent heat required to raise the, to change the state of a substance is simply equal to M multiplied by capital L, where M stands for what? This M stands for the mass of the body. So basically latent heat of melting or latent heat of freezing is the heat required to melt or freeze. Melt or freeze one gram of solid to liquid or liquid to solid at its melting or freezing point. Do we understand this? Latent heat of water or latent heat of ice, latent heat of melting of water or latent heat of ice is 80 calories. So instead of writing it as water, it's better I write it as latent heat of ice so that it gives us that this is the heat for melting or freezing. Similarly, latent heat of vaporization, which is the amount of heat required to change the state of one gram 
of water to gas or gas to water is 540 calories per gram. So if I have 10 grams of water or 10 grams of ice, you just multiply it. You just multiply it by this number and you will get and you will get your heat required to convert it. Do we understand this? Okay. To just make these points clear, I'll give you a question, a simple one. And then I'll get on to other questions where we can deal with uh, uh, these problems. I'll not give you the values of latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of melting and everything because that I've already told you and you must be knowing it. So 10 grams of ice. is at four, uh, minus 4 degrees Celsius. Now I have to convert this ice to 10 grams. So mass does not change, remember. Mass does not change, volume and density keeps on changing. Mass is remain same. So this 10 grams of ice, which is at minus 4 degrees Celsius, I have to convert it at steam. I have to convert it to steam at 100 degrees Celsius. What, have to after, what happens after steam? We should know the latent heat of uh, specific heat of uh, water vapor, which is not normally asked. So we'll just stay till 100 degree of steam, 100 degree steam. I have to convert this 10 gram of ice at minus four degrees Celsius to steam at 100 degrees Celsius. You have to tell me how much heat is required for this conversion. I'll give you a minute. I hope you all know this. I'll give you a minute to solve this and tell me the answer the question is very simple a very basic one a minute to solve it in first step we have ice at minus four degrees celsius you have to change the temperature of this ice and you have to get to ice at zero degrees celsius do we understand this how much is the amount of heat required in this process how do you get it mass of the ice is 10 Multiplied by specific heat of ice is 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.5, multiplied by 4. Do we understand this? Step number 2, I convert ice at 0 degree Celsius to water at 0 degree Celsius. The amount of heat required will be latent heat, M into L, mass of ice is 10 and the latent heat of melting is 80. So 10 into 80. The third thing will be I have water at uh, 0 degree Celsius. I will convert it to water at 100 degree Celsius. The amount of heat required for this process is mass of water 10, specific heat of water 1 multiplied by a change in temperature that is 100. So that is my third step. And the fourth step is simply converting water at 100 degrees Celsius to steam at 100 degrees Celsius. The heat required for this process is M into L. M is 10 into 540. And we add all these and we get the final answer. We got all this. All of us got this. Correct. So we should not forget the steps that we have done. If I miss a single step, then we would land up in a soup. So I hope you understand. This was a simple question just to make you understand that you have understood how to use this. Nothing else. Now, let us move on to a different question. Now, remember, uh, whenever you are uh, changing the temperature of water, you will have water in a beaker, right? Now, this beaker will also have its thermal capacity, specific heat. So, we'll also need to heat up the beaker. So, when there is a question where you have a beaker also heated up, you must be able to find out the heat required to heat up 
the beaker. For example, we will solve this question and we will see how are we going to solve it. This is a question that appeared in one of the screenings of uh, JE. So here comes the question. And the question is pretty straightforward. And this is the question. Problem number 28, it says, two kg of ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius is mixed with five grams of kg of water at 20 degrees Celsius in an insulating vessel having a negligible heat capacity. So this uh, vessel does not have any heat capacity. Find the mass of the water remaining in the container. Have you done a question like this before? Have you done a question like this before? No? Okay, so what I'll do is, I will just change the question and I'll probably do a simpler one first. Then probably we'll move on Choose this one. That would be a better way because you have not done a question of this type. So I'll give you a smaller, simpler one first. Let me find out. Okay, let us solve this one first. Let us solve this one first. Find the amount of heat released if one kg of steam at uh, 200 degrees Celsius is converted to ice at minus at 100 degrees, it must be 100 degrees Celsius, not 200 degrees Celsius, because we don't know the latent heat of a specific heat of ice. So, find the amount of heat release if 1 kg of steam at 100 degrees Celsius is converted to ice at uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius. How will you do this? How will you do this? First of all, you have to convert I set uh, steam at 100 degrees Celsius into water at 100 degrees Celsius. The amount of heat required for that process will be how much? We have uh, 1 kg of steam at 100 degrees Celsius. That is to be converted to I set minus 20 degrees Celsius. So first of all, you will need to convert Steam at 100 degrees Celsius into water at 100 degrees Celsius, M into L. And then you'll have to convert water from 100 degrees Celsius to water at 0 degrees Celsius, M into S into delta T. Then you have to change water into ice, M into L. And then you have to reduce the temperature of ice from 0 degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Do you all understand this? Okay, then let's first try to finish the last part of this and then we will try to move on to solve that question because to solve this question, we would be needing something which is uh, known as the principle of calorimetry. Have you heard about the principle of calorimetry? So that was required to solve that question since I did not tell you that. So it was not correct for me to give you that question without telling you the principle or law of calorimetry. What this law of calorimetry tells us? then probably we will try and solve that question. What does the law of calorimetry tell us? Can anyone tell me what is law of calorimetry? What is the law of calorimetry? We know this, yes or no? So uh, basically it means Heat lost is equal to heat gain, correct? So I'll just write it like this. Heat loss is equal to heat gain. If you have two bodies and one of the bodies is losing heat, the other body must be gaining heat. 
and since there is no heat loss remember whenever we are doing question on conduction and convection and radiation we'll always assume that no heat is lost in the process so normally we assume that no heat is lost so if one body is losing heat the other body is gaining heat and uh, we have whatever heat is lost by one body the same heat would be gained by another body let us solve a simple problem based on this for example, I have 10 grams of water. At uh, 10 degrees Celsius and it is mixed with. Twenty grams of water. And again, I'm not dealing with the beaker here at 20 degrees celsius what will be the final temperature i hope you have done this question at least yes or no solve this first solve this then we will try to make uh, some understanding of how to do that question probably we'll do one more question and then probably we'll jump onto that question and finish this class 10 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius is mixed with 20 grams of water at uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Find the final temperature. It is as easy as it gets. You might not get a more simpler question than this. I hope all of you know this. Got it? Okay. Let us call the final temperature as theta. Now, this theta will be greater than 10 degrees Celsius and it will be smaller than 20 degrees Celsius. All of us understand this, right? One of, one of these bodies is going to gain heat. Which body is going to gain heat? This is the body that is going to gain heat. Yes or no? And this is the body that is going to lose heat. So, delta QL. How much is delta Q heat gained? Mass. Mass is 10. Specific of water is 1 multiplied by the change in temperature. How much is the change in temperature? Final temperature is theta. Initial temperature is uh, 10. So I just multiply it by theta minus 10. Do we all understand this? This is as simple as it gets. How much heat is lost? Ms delta T, delta theta. Lost. Mass is 20. Latent heat of water is 1. And what is the change in temperature? Final temperature is theta. Initial temperature is 20. So I write it as 20 minus theta. Is it correct? No, it is not correct. Because if I write 20 minus theta, I am not writing the change in temperature. It is not change in temperature. Change in temperature is final minus initial. But I know that when I write, just, uh, just uh, remember this, how I'm writing it and what is the difference. When I write, heat gained is equal to heat lost. Remember, heat gained is treated as a positive quantity in physics. And heat lost is a negative quantity in physics. Okay? Now, I cannot equate a positive quantity to, to a negative quantity. Now, the, there's a other way of writing this. The other way of writing this is delta Q gain plus delta Q lost. That is equal to zero. Now, when I write it like this, in that case, this is negative and this one is positive. Are you getting my point? This one will come out to be negative, obviously, and this will, be, this will come out to be positive because when I write heat gained, I always multiplied by change in temperature, final minus initial. Final minus initial will be positive here. Final minus initial will be negative here. So this already becomes negative. But when I'm writing it in this fashion, 
I have to treat both these quantities as positive. Do we understand this? This quantity has to be positive. This is always positive. This quantity also needs to be positive. And that is the reason, that is the reason that I have written 20 minus theta and not theta minus 20. Am I clear with this? This finishes this. There is no problem with this question because this question simply has two waters getting mixed. When will problem come? When will problem come? The problem will come when uh, the question becomes like this. Question becomes like this. Now I change the question and I have 50 grams of water. Let us say at 50 degrees Celsius is mixed with ice at minus 50 degrees Celsius. How many grams of ice? Let me take it as 50, just to make things simple. 50 grams of water at 50 degrees and 50 grams of ice as minus 50. Now remember, depending on the mass and the temperature of this ice and water, we could have different, different sort of things that can happen. Let us see what can happen. Find the final temperature and you might also see Find the final temperature and you might also see composition of the mixture. You might also hear this term composition of the mixture. Now remember this was the, this is a similar question that the question you saw came in uh, J.E. screening of that time. This is a similar question. Now what do you mean by composition of the mixture? Try this question and let us see if you can uh, Make out what do you mean by this composition of the mixture. I'll give you a minute to think about it. And uh, you let me know what are your thoughts. Since you cannot speak, I'll have to speak on your behalf. I'll do it on your behalf. Don't worry. If you can do this question, in the next class, we'll solve some more confusing ones. Since you are uh, okay with this, I'll solve some question for the exercise. And that will probably seal your... Uh, calorimetry forever. I'll give you a minute to think about it. A minute to win it. Well, have you solved this question? What is the final temperature or the final composition? Okay. Now, whenever a question comes, wherever you are having water mixed with water, not a problem. If you have ice mixed with water or ice mixed with stream, you will have uh, certain uh, cases that can happen. Now, what are the things that can happen? Case number one, the temperature, final temperature theta is less than zero degrees Celsius. Do we understand this case? So the heat is enough to first decrease the temperature of entire water, then start to freeze it, and then water will again start to decrease its temperature. That is one case. Case number two is this theta is greater than zero degrees Celsius. Two simple cases we all of us can understand. But there is third case and which is the most likely case in most of the cases that this theta is equal to zero degree Celsius. So first of all let us see how much heat is required to how much heat is required to convert this ice from minus third minus 50 to zero degree celsius so ice minus 50 to zero degree celsius how much heat is required so delta q will be equal to 50 into 0 0.5 into 50. Do we understand this? This much heat is required to be given to I so that I changes from minus 50 to 0. Okay. Now, let us see how much heat is required for water to come from 50 to 0. 
from 50 to 0, delta Q is equal to 50 into 1 into 50. Now we have this both of these values. What is the uh, what is the Nietzsche value? I think it's 2500, just so no. And this is 1250, right? So now that means to convert ice from minus 50 to 0, I only need 1250 calories. But to convert the entire water from 50 to 0, I will need 2500 calories. Now, can you tell me which of this case is possible? Is this case possible? Is this case possible? Can the entire water get uh, converted into zero degree and can this entire water get converted into ice? Is this possible? No, this is not possible. So now I'm left with only two cases, case number two and case number three. Which case is seeming, pos uh, which case is looking possible? There might be this case. Now, if this case is possible, then we have to convert entire ice at 0 degree Celsius to water at 0 degree Celsius. Do we understand this? How much is it required to convert that, to make that conversion? How much is it required? Delta Q for ice to get converted into water. How much is required? Mass M. M is 50 multiplied by 80. So how much it is required? 4,000 calories. Yes or no? Do we understand this? Is this much amount of wheat available? It is not available. Yes or no? It is not available because first I required 1250 to convert it to 0 degree Celsius. Then I required another 4000 to convert it to 0 degree Celsius water. This much amount of heat is not available because the total amount of heat that I have is 2500. So basically this case is also not possible. So one, both of these cases have been ruled out. Yes or no? So the only case that is possible is that the mixture will be stuck at zero degree Celsius. Now, if the mixture is stuck at zero degree Celsius, you understand this? You will have to find out. You will have to find out what is the composition of the mixture. How will you find out the composition of the mixture now? How will you find out the composition of the mixture? Right? So, the total amount, the uh, case in which I have more heat is this one. So, out of this 12, out of this 2500 heat that is available, that water can give out, 1250 amount will be used to convert ice at 0 degree Celsius. Right? Now, the remaining amount that is remaining is 1250. Now, this 1250 will be this 1250 will be utilized to convert whatever ice into water at zero degree Celsius. So how much ice will melt into water? How much ice will melt into water? So I use delta Q is equal to M into L. This delta Q that I have is only 2500 minus 1250. That will be equal to mass of ice that is converted into water multiplied by 80. Do we understand this? So mass of ice that converts into water will be 1250 divided by 80. If I do it, it is 125 by 8, whatever it is. Now you have to tell me what is the composition of the mixture. How will you tell me the composition of the mixture? How much water is there in the mixture and how much ice is there in the mixture? How much water is there and how much ice is there in the mixture? So the mass of water, MW, mass of water is, I already have 50 grams of water. This will be 50 plus M, this M, this M. What is the mass of ice in the mixture? That will be total mass was 50, but some has converted into water, 50 minus M. If you see, the total mass still remains 100. The total mass in all is still 100. Mass cannot be changed. 
but you have a mixture of water and ice and the temperature is 0 degree Celsius. Do we understand this? How this will be done? So every question that comes in this category where you have one state of water mixed with another state of water, we'll have to think about the all the possible cases that are possible. Can I move forward and uh, we understand this? Yes or no? We understand this? Now can you try to solve this question as an homework? Have you got this uh, sheet with you, beta? Okay, I just I, I, I inquired uh, with sir in the morning and he told me that it, it will be given to you. It is already there to you. There with you. Anyways, uh, you have the problem with you. This is JE screen. So can you solve this uh, at home? Can you note down this question? I have 2 kg of ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is mixed with uh, 5 uh, kgs of water at uh, 20 degrees Celsius in an insulating vessel with a negligible heat capacity. Calculate the final mass of water remaining in the container. So this question gives away, sort of gives away, what is the final temperature of the mixture? That is not asked in the question, but you will have to find out what is the final temperature of the mixture. I think it is going to be 100 grams. No, I think it is going to be 0 degrees Celsius. It is given that a specific heat of water and ice are 1 and 0.5 respectively, latent heat of region of ice is 80 calories per kg or gram. Do we understand this? Will you be able to solve this one? Similar question? Only thing that has changed is the mass of water and the temperature of water and mass of ice and temperature of ice. I know that you are good enough to solve this. So in the next class, what we will do solve more questions on this <coughs> and i hope by the next class you will have this sheet with you so can i can tell you the sh question number on the sheet show you on the screen you should be able to solve it from there on i have just inquired that you would be getting this sheet probably today the printout should be there with you okay so we'll meet in the next class tomorrow try this question and we'll solve a few more and then we will move on to the next topic. What is the next topic? Any idea what is the next topic? Heat transfer. No, we'll not move on to heat transfer now. We'll do heat transfer at the last. Uh, the next topic will be, we'll deal with kinetic theory of gases. And that is the most confusing chapter in this. So we'll deal with the most confusing chapter in the next class after solving a few problems on calorimetry. Will you be able to solve this one? Yes or no? Okay, then in the next class, we will <coughs> move ahead with more problems. Take care.